Hello and welcome to Let's Play Dark Souls 3. My name is Jamal and I'll be your gameplay commentator through this blind Let's Play. Here we go. I have not played Dark Souls 3 before. I don't know what to expect. I'm avoiding all spoilers about the game until I finish recording this playthrough. That's why it's called Blind Let's Play. I have played through the tutorial area and the first boss because I messed up and didn't rec didn't connect my microphone as I recorded my first two hours of the game or didn't connect the microphone to the recording software. So I messed up there. We missed some of my initial reactions to the first things in the game. But from uh, part two onwards, this let's play will be blind. I have played quite a lot of Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2, not all the DLCs of the Dark Souls 2, but uh, I am relatively experienced Dark Souls player, so I'm expecting to pick up this game relatively easily, but still have a hard time and uh, enjoy the challenge of the game. So uh, don't expect any kind of a guide or walkthrough uh, how to play this game, but uh, you will get a uh, true through uh, first time experience of the game uh, through my eyes and my commentary. So if that's what you are looking for, just uh, enjoy the ride, pick the playlist from the video description and uh, enjoy this journey with me. And uh, without any, uh, any further ado, let's uh, start a new game. Yes, indeed. It is called Lothric, where the transitory lands of the Lords of Cinder converge. In venturing north, the pilgrims discover the truth of the old words. So the opening cinematic 
saw it now for the second time and I still love it. In a true Dark Souls fashion it uh, introduces us, or at least I think so, it introduces us to the main enemies or the main bosses of the of the game. But uh, here we are into character creation, so I'll be calling myself Jamal for this run. I'll be playing with the male, uh, age mature, and uh, I decided to start the game with the Herald, which uh, to me seems to be kind of a hybrid between a knight and a cleric. So uh, the starting classes in, uh, in the Dark Souls uh, and also in Dark Souls 3 are just a kind of a template for you to begin with. The stats are not that important, but uh, but the gear you get at the beginning will uh, carry you through the first phases of the game. And that's why I like uh, when uh, starting a new game and uh, if you are new to the Souls series, begin with something like the Knight or the Herald, so you have a decent armor to begin with. If you start with someone like, like a Thief or Assassin, uh, you, uh, you will have a little harder time because you don't have a good shield, for example. So Herald is the one I will start with, and um, I can't use the explanation yet to show you the new stat, Luck, but uh, that more or less uh, constitutes to the item discovery. There were some other characteristics in that as well, but uh, the other stats are familiar from uh, previous Souls games, but uh, I will take a look at those uh, as I go into the, into the game. The Burial Gift, uh, all of these apart from the Life Ring are consumables and uh, at least to me it seems that there are no kind of Master Key like uh, gifts here that uh, we had in the previous, previous games. So uh, I'll be picking the Life Ring just to make my uh, time a little easier at the beginning as I have more hit points. And uh, the game the game is pretty nice in, uh, in the character creation, actually very very nice, but uh, the most interesting feature is that it actually allows you to uh, save and load favorites. So uh, I created my, uh, my uh, uh, second playthrough character already, pretty much uh, as close as I uh, could get at the moment for uh, for my sorcerer from my Dark Souls 2 runs, but uh, this time I'll be playing with a guy that looks like this. Not exactly looking like me, maybe apart from that uh, 5 o'clock shadow beard, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll go with that. Uh, but uh, I spend a good hour here uh, creating my character and creating that female as well, uh, when I notice that I can actually save these, so uh, that's, that's very nice. I really like that feature. All in all, the character creation character creation here is uh, very, very uh, uh, complex and, uh, and uh, feature heavy. You can do a whole lot of things. I, I do like the body here. I am wondering what this voice is. Uh, because there's a, you can set the voice for your character. So is your character voiced? Uh, will you speak? Or are these just some grunts or something? I don't know. But uh, that caught my attention when I was playing for the first time, that uh, why? Why do I have a voice? But uh, that still remains to be seen what that actually means. So I'll be playing with the Herald, taking the life ring, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go and have some uh, fun in Dark Souls 3. As I mentioned, as I mentioned in the in the intro, I played through this tutorial area, through the first boss, uh, through the first area. Uh, it took me about two hours as I looked looked every corner and had some uh, had some uh, difficulties against the boss and uh, some enemies. But uh, yeah, forgot to check that my microphone is properly recording in the story that I used to record this and uh, it wasn't, <laughs> so uh, two hours wasted, wasted right there, but uh, yeah, as said, from, uh, from part two forward, this let's play will be blind, but since we are here in the, in the game now, let's have a proper introduction to the character, so welcome to Dark Souls 3. And as I take a look at my character here, let's take a quick look at uh, 
at uh, status because here that I can use the explanation and show you about some changes we have. So uh, this time we actually have uh, focus points which are used for both spells and um, and the special skills in the weapons, which I don't know too much about yet, but I do know that they use these focus points. You also get uh, Ashen Estus Flask, which will uh, which will uh, gain you back these focus points. And uh, from what I can see, the the spells don't have charges like they did in uh, in uh, the previous games, but instead they use the focus points and uh, if you have more focus points you can cast more spells. And, uh, and then you also have that uh, that Estus Flask uh, for the Ashen, Ashen Estus Flask to get those points back. So uh, a bit more options for the spell spell based characters there. So we have Viker giving me uh, hit points, also resistance to frost, attunement, basically number of spells, Endurance, uh, uh, Stamina, and then also Lightning and Bleeding Resistance, Vitality, giving me a physical defense, it affects the equipment load, um, and Poison Resistance, Strength, um, giving uh, giving resistance to fire, improving attack, attack strength for the strength-based weapons, uh, Dexterity, pretty much the same thing but for, uh, for fast ones, reduces damage taken when falling, that's an important one as well, Intelligence, Acquired, acquired to cast sorceries and pyromancies, and uh, interestingly, pyromancy is affected by both fate and intelligence, uh, not uh, by the strength of the pyromancy glove. Then we have fate, uh, which is important to me as uh, if I role play as a, as a, as a herald here, uh, casting some miracles. I do have a heal spell to begin with, and then we have the luck that uh, affects the item discovery. How uh, how often good things drop from the enemies and so on. Also resistance to curses. But uh, yeah, one thing before going, let uh, let me show you the show you the inventory. What I really liked here that if I uh, if I uh, click the right thumbstick. I can actually see my character here. So, for example, if I if I take the equipment, I can actually see uh, what uh, what I look like in uh, in actual actual game, not uh, not in some uh, paper doll there in the inventory. So that's that's really nice. And then you can see all the stats if you uh, if you so choose to. Uh, really liking this inventory, even. Uh, even uh, for, for both mouth, 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 for both mouse and and controller. I'm playing this on a PC. Since I didn't mention that, I'm, I'm using the controller. But uh, just saying that uh, that the inventory is really nice, using uh, using the screen space very nicely, and uh, not not in any kind of uh, dumped down console uh, inventory to me. At, at least that's my uh, first impression. The game gives me uh, the tutorial here, how to control the camera. Uh, how to do the how to do the attacks, and uh, later on these kind of messages can be left by players as well. Uh, at that point, I will not be looking at all of them. Probably by reflex, I will read them, but uh, just uh, not uh, not spoiling some uh, some points. I uh, might not look at the, look at the messages because the game will give me the other players will leave some hints about bosses and enemies and such. Good attack. Backstep. Roll. Backstep and attack. Gives you a special attack with some weapons at least. Then I can dash. Some souls. Let's just check that there's nothing here what we can see. There's some sort of a tower there and a wall. But uh, can't see much else. You can also, uh, I don't know, uh, I haven't really had a, well, since I played only two hours, I didn't have a chance to test, but you can charge your power attack. And uh, that will at least maybe uh, break some, uh, break the guard of the, of the enemies or something. I don't know how it affects, but uh, uh, probably. Probably does more damage, but uh, that's, uh, that's an interesting change. And there's the Ashen, Ashen Estus Flask, so I can also uh, restore my uh, focus points. And I can uh, block. One thing I really liked about this uh, 
about this herald is that my shield is 100% physical physical block which is really good starting shield so I was really happy of picking the herald and uh, let's see if I can backstab this guy managed to do so there's also a special attack coming out of the roll you, uh, if you attack right after after the troll, so I can use the Estus flask, and then uh, if I two hand the weapon and I uh, hit the left trigger, I will use the special skill of the weapon using the focus points, which is with uh, with the spear the shield splitter. That's uh, that's we can see uh, see right there. So types of skill, and it costs 16 points. Some occasional frame drops, but uh, for most of the part, uh, the performance of the game is, uh, is uh, really good. But uh, occasionally, the frame drop, uh, frame, frames drop a bit. Always check the corner. Oh, I actually didn't get that many drops from these guys. Forward and there we go. Geek. All right. Barry and then repost. All right. So there's the most of the tutorial in the game, and then uh, this was uh, this was very very Souls-like, and it brought me fond memories of Dark Souls 2. <laughs> there's a message here turn back. And now, uh, let's be honest here, no one turns back, right? No one turns back. I didn't. And uh, I learned the hard way that uh, that the Dark Souls 3 is just as much of a Souls game as the previous ones. So uh, let's heal ourselves to uh, a bit here before I go in. So uh, we can see uh, some shiny there. But we also see that guy. And we some, see some blood stains that this guy is no joke. But uh, at this stage I might mention the awesome graphics of this game. Uh, I haven't played the HD version of the... <coughs> HD version of the Dark Souls 2 and I haven't played Bloodborne. So uh, I, I'm not used to uh, this nice of a graphics from... Uh, from a Souls game. But uh, this, uh, this enemy here and, uh, and the environment looks fantastic. I also also really like the movement of the cloak on my character, but uh, yeah, this guy is the troll of the of the of the Dark Souls three troll you had in Dark Souls two. So uh, not a difficult enemy if you come here later, but uh, if you have if you have if you decide to fight the guy at this stage with the poor weapon, you will have a really hard time. But uh, I decided to take the challenge anyway. And since I, since I did the challenge in my first attempt, I will uh, take it here as well. Trying to check the movements of this guy and I'm trying to learn the pattern. Who was too uh, too close?
Oh, I actually hurt you there, did I? Since I only played for two hours, I don't know how uh, how good or or bad the starting weapons of the other characters, character classes are. But the spear, I like the range, but uh, against this guy, it's not doing much damage. But I think that's the same with everyone. Like I still, I'm still a little stunned about the looks of this guy. How, uh, how he looks and how awesome the graphics are. I li really, really like it. That's probably a good chance to go uh, really close against the guy if you get behind it. In case you are, in case you are wondering, I died, died three times to this guy on my first time before I beat him. <laughs> so uh, don't think I'm, uh, don't think I'm uh, any uh, any good at this game. Even that uh, I'm having relatively easy time against this guy now, but uh, I had my practice already. Of course, now he will uh, kick my ass or something if I get greedy. I think I got him. Yep. Nice. Okay. From my uh, two two time attempts, this guy uh, always drops the titanite scale. But uh, this shiny here is really, really, really trollish. You only get a little bit of a soul, so you don't even get a special item or anything. I don't know. But uh, still, a whole lot of whole lot of fun, as you can see from the blood stains. All these blood stains are dead players, as I'm uh, playing this game online. So uh, yeah, as said, no one turns back. No one. Do anything to do from here? Not really. Okay, let's go. No, well, I'm still a little surprised I actually beat the guy on the first attempt here on this run. But uh, yeah, I guess I'm learning. So I'm basically repeating what I did in my first two hours playing the game, uh, doing the same things, but uh, of course not having the, not having the first reactions and I'm not not as worried as I was in the first run but uh, don't worry and uh, as I get into the next area um, next area the, in the next part we will uh, we will most certainly have my uh, our our moments of uh, not knowing what will happen really liking liking the sights there so that's where I'm heading I already see the path. We also have our first bonfire, and the game I think also tells me about it, yeah. And if you haven't played any Souls game, when you rest at the bonfire, the, all the enemies will respawn, or most of the enemies will respawn. There are one-off enemies, like the bosses, and uh, some minor, minor bosses, but uh, most of the enemies Enemies come back. I didn't check if I go back. Would that ice titanite? Uh, not sure what the enemy is actually, but that's why I. That's what I call him. Called it. Uh, not sure if that one responds, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if not, because it dropped the titanite scale, and usually when you get some titanites, you. Uh, when you get some titanites, you. Uh, those enemies don't uh, don't respawn. If 
if they are kind of the titanite demons of this game. I didn't mean to do that. For some reason my uh, my grief reflexes make me press X. Maybe maybe that's because of Witcher 3, I don't know. But uh, have to have to remind myself to use the use the button and the trigger for the attacks. This was actually pretty funny. There's a uh, there's a uh, the game tells me here that you can uh, you can dash and press the press the left thumbsticks to jump, but I'm so used to into dashing with B and then uh, jumping with the B from the dash that uh, I just tried and tried and tried to uh, roll through there, and I didn't notice this message here until after seven or so attempts, and uh, that was a really face palm moment. But uh, this uh, shouldn't be that hard. But I still messed it up once. <laughs> still not easy. Plunging attack. Right, and there's something there. Uh, maybe a chance to do a plunging attack again. there. Taking quite a bit of damage here at the, the beginning, beginning of the game, so uh, while these guys are really easy, the, the game definitely isn't very much uh, very much in line with uh, what I expect from, uh, from a Souls game. So there we go. Titanite Shard. Which will probably be used for uh, upgrading weapons. And then uh, to something that immediately to me appears to be the first boss. The guy in the center of the room. In a kind of a arena. With, uh, with the nice sights to the mountains. But uh, surprisingly he didn't attack immediately, but then I noticed uh, there's something, uh, something black there, <laughs> some sort of tentacles. Uh, at least I tried to hit this guy uh, before I uh, before I realized that uh, I can actually take this sword that has been uh, that has been plunged through the heart of this uh, of this uh, character. So uh, let's do it and let's fight. The first boss. five attempts to beat this guy but uh, then I then I got the better better hang of him uh, how to how to dodge the attacks and so on how on however there's a little bit of a surprise here so uh, yeah This face of the enemy is, uh, is really hard, really hard to see what he's doing, and I expect to die here a couple of times.
Okay, so maybe I had enough practice in my first time. Actually beating, actually beating that one on the first go. So yeah, I uh, I died to this guy five times. Five times before I got him and uh, there we saw Ember restored. So my hit points went up and uh, and uh, symbol in the top left went uh, kind of Ember. So uh, if you uh, if you use an item called Ember or at least if you and also if you beat a boss, you uh, you get these uh, cinders and uh, you get uh, more hit points until you die. But uh, even that I beat the guy on the first go, I think uh, this calls for the little fist pump. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right. So um, again, a little surprised that I actually actually managed to get him. But uh, Dark Souls is really really. When you uh, when you get in tune with uh, how you dodge things, the, um, it's a whole lot whole lot easier. But however, there's a there's a guy in this next area that I couldn't beat before, so uh, that will be a fun challenge. Fun challenge to uh, to start with, and we uh, will also get into the, what I believe is the hub of this game. Uh, the similar, similar you had in, uh, in Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 2 and um, I guess also Demon Souls, even that I haven't played that. Uh, Dark Souls, Dark Souls 1 was the only game without a, without a hub, as uh, if I, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, and it also has a, also has a familiar name. It's also interesting to see how uh, how this game links to uh, how this game links to uh, Dark Souls One and Dark Souls Two. The land is land is different. These, these guys with shields, I'm having hard time against them. Have to. Uh, have to figure out a way to do it. But I really like this Ember system, getting those hit points, so if you stay alive, that's your uh, that's your benefit, but uh, I also noticed, I haven't haven't died here yet, but uh, I noticed that uh, I didn't go hollow when I died, so uh, I stayed in, uh, in a human form. But of course, if you die, you lose this Ember, if you have beaten a boss or used, used an Ember. But... Um, Quite a view, quite a view. So uh, the intro cinematic said that this place is uh, is Lotrak. Oh, I believe Lotrak was it Lotrak? So uh, not sure if it's related to uh, to Lordran, and how I said how this link to Dark Souls One and Dark Souls Two. Uh, that uh, that part I cannot wait, cannot wait to find out. Oh, I tried to kick, but uh, failed miserably. But, uh, the graphics, the looks, the atmosphere in this first area, really liked it. Really, really liking it here as I go through it for the second time. Uh, fantastic. Oh, hello. There's someone there. Uh, maybe I will... Try this shield break. Oh, let's not. All right, I like it. That uh, that went well. No, uh, no hidden items here, at least from what I see. Really liking the lighting as well. I'm playing this on uh, on the Mac settings. As, uh, as high as I could put, put them, and the game is running really well. Oh shit! <laughs> oh, 
Come on, dog. Holy shit. I, I did not remember this. Oh, wow. Okay, that was the first first jump scare of the of this run. Holy shit. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I like this game. Okay. Let's see what we can uh, what we can find in here. We'll go there in just a moment. Uh, right up there we see a man standing, and from these blood stains you can uh, probably think that uh, probably think that the guy is uh, quite quite tough. So I, I won't go there until I rested at the bonfire, as that was the guy I couldn't beat before. Right, now I remember, I actually came from this side and dropped from here. Uh, dropped from here, so I came... Met the dog from the other direction. Met the dog from the other direction. So it didn't surprise me like it did there. This time. So dropping off from here, you uh we were able to get it uh, get it from the other side. Okay, but then the place with the familiar name, Violin Shrine. I immediately started thinking that is this somehow related to the Violin Shrine from uh, from Dark Souls, Dark Souls Three, but uh, I don't yet have the answers for that. That uh, remains to be seen. Let's see, was there something here? You can see that item from there. We have a tree giant. Something we saw in Dark Souls. Dark Souls 2. There's a locked door. Locked door to a tower. And uh, I see a shiny there at the front and there's uh, also uh, also ladder that I can't get to yet so uh, something to look forward to I haven't been there I, I couldn't figure out a way to get up on the roof yet so that's something uh, something I will uh, get to later but uh, from uh, from what I understood uh, this is uh, this is the hub of the game this is the this is the Majula. This is where you level up. This is where you meet some characters. And, um, yeah. Actually, meet some familiar characters as well, which was something something I really, really enjoyed, and you will see in that, just, in that in just a moment. Ah, another one roused from the sleep of death. Well, you're not alone. We unkindled are worthless. Can't even die right. Gives me conniptions. And they'd have us seek the Lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. But we're talking true legends with the metal to link the fire. We're not fit to lick their boots. Well, this uh, guy certainly has the crestfallen spirit in him. Don't not sure. Think? <laughs> Not sure if he's uh, any relation to the guy at uh, Filing Shrine of Dark Souls 1, or even if he's the same guy, but uh, he definitely has the same demeanor. What a sick joke. Asking us to seek the Lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. We're talking true legends, those who would link the fire. We're not fit to lick their boots. <laughs> Then uh, I think this lady here, uh, she was in the, she was in the intro cinematic, I think, picking up that mask. Don't know her name, but uh, she's the one uh, who I can, uh, who 
who I can level up with. And uh, if you pay attention there, right above my head about now, you see a familiar guy. And uh, man, was I happy to see Andre. That uh, immediately gave me a little chills. Nice little nostalgia right there, but uh, we will go talk to him in uh, just a bit. Welcome to the bonfire, unkindled one. I'm a firekeeper. I tend to the flame and tend to thee. The lords have left their thrones and must be delivered to them. To this end, I am at thy side. So here we can level up, so I will actually do that Very right well. away. Then touch the darkness within me. Take nourishment from these sovereignless souls. So uh, I will take my strength to 16, dexterity to 12. More or less to have some sort of a base for weapons. I think strength 16, at least in the previous Souls game, has been a good, uh, good uh, standard to be with. And then you can decide what build you go for. I will also take uh, some, uh, some endurance to increase my stamina as the endurance of the Herald is a uh, little on the low side. So let's go with that. And you can also, again, put uh, details out and uh, see this uh, see this nice view. Really liking it. And she also chants there. Awesome. Ashen One, to be unkindled is to be a vessel for souls. Sovereignless souls will become thy strength. I will show thee how. Ashen One, bring me souls plucked from their vessels. Ashen One, to be unkindled is to be a vessel for souls. Sovereignless souls will become thy... I was actually checking that. Can I, uh... Can I somehow turn off the UI if I want to? Mm. Key bindings. Uh, camera reset. see anything to turn the UI off. It would be nice for uh, nice for some screenshots, but uh, let's, uh, let's go without. And uh, we got a coiled sword when I uh, when I beat the first boss. And uh, this is where you can use it. Create your own bonfire. You can organize your uh, storage box. You can burn undead bone shards, and there's also the bonfire level, just like it was in, uh, just like it was in the Dark Souls 2. So uh, you can now uh, level up the areas as you could there. And there's also an option to travel, and uh, that's the part where I didn't go yet, the High Wall of Lothric. So that's where I will go in the part two. Then we have these areas I have visited already here uh, in the Cemetery of Ash. But uh, before I go there, before I start the uh, true blind part of this, uh, this playlist, let's uh, see who else we can find here and let's go talk to Andre. But before that, let's uh, talk to this one. A pleasure to make thine acquaintance, Ashen One. I am but a humble handmaid of the shrine. Weapons, armor, trinkets, and spells. I've lots of little things to ease the burden of a weary traveler. And yes, I'm undead too, but not so charitable as to give my goods away. Ashen One, fetch souls and bring them to me. As is thy want, 
No. <laughs> you can't have a lady merchant without a laugh. <laughs> so, uh, she is selling a lot of things, uh, including a white sign soapstone, which I think I will buy at this stage already. So I'll uh, have that covered so I can have uh, cooperation if I so choose to. Probably will go to the bosses on my own, but then I might help someone else beat the boss with the white sign. She's also selling the tower key, which I assume is to that locked door I found earlier. Um, sadly, uh, she's not selling a long, so long sword, something I really would like to buy at this stage. But uh, I can buy a sorcerer's staff from here if I want to start casting spells. And also, since I started with the herald and I have the 100% physical block shield, uh, she doesn't sell any, so uh, it's a really valuable item. At least uh, for me here, going going to Lothric. And uh, repair powder, embers. With the embers, you get the same effect you get when you beat a boss. So uh, that's also uh, also really interesting items, really valuable as well. And I already found two of them. The usual purple moss, the fire bombs, prism stones. Mm, could actually buy a prism stone. A couple of stacks maybe. Just if I get into areas where I need to drop things, or mark things. Homeward bones... Uh, well, I have two now. I think that will be enough for now. If I want to return. So that's all items, and then I could uh, go into the sorted views. Ashen One, if my wares are not to thy satisfaction, bring me umbral ash. With ash, I'll fashion new wares. Is it not our sorry fate to sup on death? <laughs> Umbral Ash. So, uh, she will be probably useful throughout the game if you, uh, if you manage to find Umbral Ash and uh, upgrade her wares. So I will definitely be keeping my eyes open for the, for the Ash. Ashen One, if my wares are not to thy satisfaction, bring me Umbral Ash. I will. But the first I will talk to the f everyone's favorite smith. Well, a newcomer, I see. I am Andre. I serve at this shrine as a humble smith forging weapons. You're in search of the Lords of Cinder, I trust. A toilsome journey, I wager. You require good arms. Let me smith your weapons. I am a smith. Such is my purpose. So interestingly, Andre doesn't sell anything, but uh, you can uh, upgrade your weapons. However, uh, I think I will. Uh, I think I will keep my uh, keep my spear as a normal one and upgrade maybe when I get my first sword or something. Yeah, I think I, I think I will wait with that. Again, you can infuse weapons like you could in uh, in Dark Souls 2. So making a, making for example a fire weapon out of something. And the refined refined spear. It also uh, this uh, changes the changes the scaling of it. Uh, so I'll be looking looking at that. Uh, what uh, what is the best option? Uh, in this game, uh, you only need to repair stuff uh, if they break. As, as far as I can see, the items uh, repair themselves when you uh, when you rest at the bonfire. So unless you break them on one run, you are yeah, good to go. And this was interesting. You can change how many of the different kind of Estus flasks you have. So uh, for a for a magic user, you might uh, might want to go for high and have a really high number of spells to use. That's uh, really an interesting option. I really like that. So I will go with the free and one for now. We don't have any Estus shards yet, so we can't have any more. But uh, we'll most certainly talk to Andre the blacksmith. Weapons and protection are sturdy enough by and large, but when overused, they'll eventually break. When their durability is low, repair becomes a necessity. Use a powder, 
or simply rest at a bonfire. But should chance impel them break, bring them me. I'll hammer them back into shape. They take no pleasure in breaking, I assure ye. So handle them with care, if you would. So there, Andre, telling him exactly what I just said. <laughs> so thanks, Andre. There are two ways to smith weapons. Simple reinforcement is one, and infusion the other. Reinforcement is straightforward. It strengthens a weapon without altering its property. Infusion is a more advanced form of smithing that infuses an element. Reinforcement requires titanite, and infusion requires gems. Bring the stones, and I'll do the smithing. It's my purpose, after all. In battle, your weapons are your only friends. Forge them well, and they won't let you down. Hurrah, indeed. And Andre has a lot to say, and I really like that they, uh, they did a good job giving us a friendly, uh, friendly familiar face in here. Ah, another matter. Infusing weapons with gems requires a special kind of coal. My humble coals won't be any use infusing more unusual gems. I know, it's an awful shame, but it's all I have. Oh, please don't give me that look. Believe it or not, I'm quite thin-skinned. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, by the way, if you find any Estus shards, bring them here. They can be used to reinforce either of your Estus flasks. Without those flasks, you'd want for life or focus. And they'll always stay with you. Why not treat them well? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Weapons and protection is but when when they you but Date so. All right. So. Pretty be careful. I don't want to see my work squandered. <laughs> All right. So now we have seen what I know about the game so far. I did uh, explore the areas around here a bit. Uh, don't recall. I don't think I found anything special. I even hit some walls trying to find out if there are secrets here. Um. So maybe time for that will be later. To me, this uh, filing shrine seems like an area where the NPCs you meet will come and then you can talk to them. And of course you can come here, uh, get your items from the merchant, level up, have a have a little uh, have a little fun time with Andre. What is that sound? One thing I don't know is how the how the secret walls work in this game. Uh, do you activate them? Do you go through the wall? Do you roll through the roll through the wall, or what do you do? Because I haven't found a secret wall yet. But anyway, thank you for watching this first part. In the next part, uh, which I look forward very much we will go into into the part of the game that i don't know nothing about we will go to lothric so join me then when the blind part begins and uh, i will most certainly have have more deaths than i've had so far so thanks for watching uh, leave the comments in the comment section but no spoilers about the game if you like the video do uh, do hit the like button always uh, helps the channel out and uh, if you are new to my channel, do consider subscribing to the channel. If you watch this far, my uh, channel might be the right one for you. So uh, uh, do subscribe to get notified when I post new videos, including new Dark Souls free videos. And uh, if you are watching this on a later date, uh, do pick the playlist from the video description. Click the link and uh, just enjoy the ride. Uh, put autoplay on and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next part. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.